It was a war of choice, something Britain didn't have to do, but which Tony Blair, a few of his allies and the service chiefs felt they had to get involved with. The meeting one year before the invasion at President Bush's ranch in Texas would prove pivotal. When Mr Blair met President Bush at Crawford, Texas in early April 2002, the formal policy was still to contain Saddam Hussein. But by then, there had been a profound change in the UK's thinking. The government was stating that Iraq was a threat that had to be dealt with. It had to disarm or be disarmed. Three months later, Tony Blair wrote to the president, I will be with you, whatever, but this is the moment to assess bluntly the difficulties. The planning on this and the strategy are the toughest yet. This is not Kosovo. This is not Afghanistan. It is not even the Gulf War. Britain joined the US in trying to bring the matter to a head via the United Nations by sending weapons inspectors into Iraq. But when that didn't produce the evidence, they started to plan for war. In the absence of a majority in support of military action, we consider that the UK was in fact undermining the Security Council's authority. As the forces got ready to invade Iraq, the cabinet was kept on the sidelines. Four months before it happened, the cabinet secretary told the inquiry preparations were becoming public without any discussion in cabinet. The reservists are being given notice, purchasing is being, uh, purchases are being made, and assets, troops are being moved, and ships are being dispatched on manoeuvres, in inverted commas, or on exercises. The next day, that is reported to cabinet. OK? So you can see that they, they're, the extent to which they're brought into the story um, lags a long way behind what had the, the degree of A, thinking, and by this time, preparation. If there's a key takeaway from all this, it's the degree to which Tony Blair kept vital decision-making to himself and one or two close allies. Indeed, Sir John Chilcott flags up 11 separate occasions when he says Blair should have had close consultations with cabinet colleagues and officials and allowed them to have their say, but didn't do so. As drafts of the government's WMD assessments evolved towards the dossier of September 2002, many of those steeped in the intelligence started to be alarmed. The claims of the threat were uh, massaged in London. I don't know by whom, but I can guess. They were massaged in London to present a more certain picture than actually that which we believed. And those of us who worked on it, including the weapons inspectors like David Kelly in the Defence Intelligence staff, were surprised by this process. As to the extent to which the intelligence services fell victim to groupthink, today's report reveals... At no stage was the proposition that Iraq might no longer have chemical, biological or nuclear weapons or programmes identified or examined by either the Joint Intelligence Committee or the policy community. Worse, Chilcott discovered that an MI6 Iraqi spy whose reports were breathlessly circulated by the service was found to be unreliable even before the war started. Only MI6 didn't tell anyone. One of the conclusions that uh, Lord Butler made, came to was that those who are doing the assessment of what all this means, trying to get an explanation of what is going on in a country like Iraq, need to know more about the raw material that they're building the assessment on. And that didn't happen in that particular case. As for the legal basis for war, honed down and changed a few days before fighting broke out, Chilcott says... We have, however, concluded 
that the circumstances in which it was decided that there was a legal basis for UK military action were far from satisfactory. Tony Blair and his chief of staff, as late as 12 days before operations started, asked that the Attorney General's legal advice should be tightly held and not shared with ministerial colleagues without Number 10's permission. And when push came to shove, the Attorney General simply said that the key decision whether Iraq was in material breach of UN resolutions was Tony Blair's call. Once that determination was made, the way was clear for operations to begin.